Shonen Archive. I'm Wolfie, and I'm here with Zen. Hello. What Shonen Archived? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire lives to watching every single Shonen Jump property that is available to us in English, starting with Gintama, with the other series that we plan to go back to being uh, Kurgo's Basketball and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX when the time allows. But for right now, we're making headway through Gintama. And today, we're going to be talking about episodes 257 to 261, which is Courtesan of a Nation Arc. Um, before we get into that, though, <laughs> I actually have to tell you something, Zen. Okay. So, uh, remember how I said last week that there was a bunch of filler inside of the... Um, Gintama uh, stuff where they re-aired episodes basically yes so believe it or not there was new stuff inside the <laughs> inside those oh. little things they're little throwaway things so I'm gonna t- tell you the basicness of it um, you okay. see a, a little bit in the episodes that we have here you know how a lot of them end with a um, uh, hey Gintama the movie's coming out pretty soon uh-huh. In the episodes that are leading up to it, we actually get um, the author mangaka in his gorilla outfit, except for it's a real gorilla outfit that they made based off of the the, <laughs> the little avatar they had of him. So in the first one, he is going through it, and they're saying, like, oh, yeah, let's look at the, the, the master at his craft, and he's, like, not doing anything. And then the next episode, it ends, it's like, we're going to join in to see what he's doing. Obviously, he's still brainstorming, trying to think of the completely original plot that is going to be in this movie. Not doing anything, he sleeps, and then he, like, farts, and then they yell at him, saying, hey, don't do that. <laughs> next next episode, Kagura af- offers him some bananas to get to work. He takes the bananas, and then he just farts as they yell at him again. <laughs> And then the next episode begins, and it's the gorilla in the special outfit, except for he's doing the pose of the, the you know, the pose he usually does where he's, like, laid back on the floor thinking up. Yeah. Uh, he's in that pose, and they actually have the, the mangaka Sarachi actually voicing his inner thoughts. It's <laughs> amazing. It is, and he's, like, thinking about, like, man, work sucks, life is so hard, <laughs> why do we have to work? Uh, and then it cuts to the next one. It's the next episode. And the, when the, and the way this one ends is they're celebrating because he finally finished writing the script for the movie. And everyone's happy and they're going, yay, he did it. And he's celebrating. He goes, why don't you give us some words of wisdom for what you have to say? Like, can you tell us anything about the movie? And he's not, he's like giving him a blank stare because it's a, obviously a costume. And then Shimpachi asks like, hey, so do I have any like uh, awesome parts in it? And then he goes down to do what looks like a fart pose. And Shimpachi's, uh, Shimpachi starts talking back to him saying like, oh man, I get, I get where you're going from this. This is clearly just, a, 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 you're just going to fart again. This is just stupid. Stop doing this. And what happens instead is that he blows up and he dies <laughs> as Shibachi screams, Gorilla! Uh, cut to the next episode and we say, like, it looks like he's recovering. He has a um, bandage over his eyes as Kago goes like, see, look, he's okay. And then we cut back and we see that it's actually a Takatsuji version of the Gorilla. <laughs> dressed up as Takatsuji, and they play his <laughs> theme song as they go like, oh, uh, never mind. And then finally, in the last of them, they confirm he dies as he looks on ahead and says, please watch the Gintama Summer movie coming soon. That's really <laughs> They funny. work so hard on it. And that is the, that is then the last one before uh, episode 257, <laughs> so I figured I'd come up and tell you about it. Really, it was. I was really surprised when I saw that stuff in there. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." They added stuff in, so there you go. Just to make sure we covered it. Now let's talk about. Let's start talking about this arc immediately. Zen, we're gonna start with episode two fifty seven. The courtesan turns the table. Go ahead. So two fifty seven. Uh, we start with a flashback that's like this. Uh... I guess courtesan is the nice way to say it. Yeah. Uh, hooker um, <laughs> and her lover, and they're like, "We're gonna, we're gonna get out of this life one day." And I promise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna run away together. 
and uh, they they make the promise by tying a little bit of their hair around the other's pinky fingers, um, and that's their their promise that they're going to meet again under this tree so they can escape together. Um, then we cut to our our boys and Sukoyo and oh god, what is the wheelchair woman's name? Hinoa. Hinoa. Yeah. Hinoa. Yeah. yeah. They are saying that there's another famous courtesan in uh, Yoshiwara named Suzuran, and she wants to meet Gintoki because of uh, what he did to save them back in the day. And he's like all getting all excited when he's there because he's like, hey, I'm going to meet this like <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> amazing courtesan lady. <laughs> and she turns out to be a super old woman. She's like a bajillion years old. Um, she's trying to do the whole like hostess thing, but she's way too old. Like she's trying to pour him a drink, and she can't even see the cup, so she's just pouring drinks everywhere. Uh, she has a seizure at one point, and they try to pass it off like she's break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her amazing dancing technique; <laughs> she yeah. clearly suffers from it. Um, she is uh, clearly dying, basically. They're like, she doesn't have much time left. And so she thanks Kentucky and she's like, you know, you're the last, um, the last customer I'm going to have. And they make a little, another little promise. That she ties the hair around his uh, pinky and says, you know, next full moon, uh, come and see me again. Uh, they talk about it, about how it's like a, a lover's pact that they do between um, the Yoshiwara and any of their customers, they give them like a, a piece of their body, like hair or nails or whatever. Um, and the old lady's still wearing hers, so that that that's the the reveal, I guess, that 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 was the young woman in the flashback is the old lady now, and the person never fulfilled the promise. Uh, so they're trying to find out who it is. They're they're going like to f try to figure out who was the person who made the promise that never showed up uh gintoki i think is trying to play it off like he's totally not doing that uh but then kagura and shimpachi ruin it and are like we got information about it uh and he's like ah oh, fuck okay yeah we're doing that um they end up coming to the conclusion that the person who made the promise was the shogun but not the one that we have now the prior shogun mm -hmm. um his name is sada sada that he was like the one before this uh, and he is the guy who he he's the shogun who let the aliens invade. Basically, um, everyone's kind of pissed off about it, uh, and they decide that they want to figure out how to get him back for it. And then Kagura's like, "I'm friends with the younger sister of the now shogun, so we can just go in if we want to." Um, they get led in, but the palace is under like high alert because people have been getting attacked. Only to reveal that the Mimawari Gumi guy, the the douche with the glasses and the guns, is uh, there. Yeah, Isaburo. Isaburo, yeah. He's like, yeah, we're we're here on guard duty, um, and he he gives Gintoki another phone. And he's like, here, I got a phone, and he starts texting him immediately. <laughs> he not only does he say, he's like, it's very mean that you threw away your phone. Yeah, it, it was really mean to throw your old phone away, so I bought you a new one. <laughs> And he, so he just starts texting him instantly. And I think he's texting him throughout the rest of the scene. Like, I think they're, they, his phone keeps dinging. <laughs> it uh, is. It's just really funny. Um, and then they have this old man who comes in. He's like the uh, old man uh, Maizo. And he's like the retainer for the um, Shogun. And he's like, we need you guys to be quiet because everything's really tense around here. And they end up making the game uh, kick the can so that they can distract the guards and then they can move around and, and look for him without like the guards getting in the way. And so uh, Sukoyu's like, all right, kick the can as hard as you can, Kentucky, just so that the, they all go and chase it. And he kicks the shit out of the can and it ends up hitting the Shogun straight in the forehead. <laughs> and it does like a montage of like the can exploding and like a giant laser beam shooting into space <laughs> uh, as the Shogun gets hit directly in the face with the can. Uh, yep. <laughs> totally reminded me of uh, all those old... Remember those old Dokkan animations? Where they would always end with the beam going off in the space? Yeah, it looks exactly like that. It looks really similar. Uh, how'd you like this episode, Zen? 
Uh, it was good. It was fun. It was a funny little thing. The the Shogun getting hit with the can fucking killed me. It was really funny. Oh, man. Um, but the, the rest was good, too. Yes, it was a very uh, start of an arc. Uh, a good start of an arc one of kind of like easing you into what the arc is going to be overall about. Um, I really liked it. I liked a lot of bits of it. There's a... Uh, oh, well, first of all, we have a new OP and a new ED. <laughs> Yes, and they both bang. They both bang. We have um, uh, OP13, which is uh, Sakura Mitsuki, which is by Spire, the same people who did um, Some Like It Hot. Oh, no, it's called Samurai Heart, it's parentheses, Samurai Heart, yeah. Some Like It Hot, <laughs> because it could go both ways. Uh, and then the other one is, uh, ex- the ED is Expect, and it is by, uh, it is called Expect, and I don't... The singer's page. I, for some of the Japanese artists, occasionally I was like, okay, yes, they're either a Japanese name or they are an English an English word uh, in all caps. <laughs> but either way, that's what it is. I really do like this OP. It's a really nice looking OP. Uh, fits very well. I like the whole theming of it as well because they have it 100% moon themed. I actually like when the OP ends, it actually kind of goes into the beginning of this episode really well because it also ends on the moon and stuff. Um... Yeah, real, real, real good stuff. Both of them, really good. I think I end up liking the OP more than the ED, but the ED is also really good for for this one right here. Uh, and in terms of the episode, there was some funny stuff here. I like. There's a bit where it's it, it was a really quick one where uh, Gintoki is. I forget what they're arguing about, but they mention specifically. Um, the wives from Dragon Quest. It goes like you have to go for Bianca, or and then the uh, and then Hinawa brings up it was like or Deborah. Never think about, never forget about Deborah, which is really funny because it's like in the Dragon Quest Five is called Heavenly Bride, and for most people there are two brides. It's Bianca and Nera, and then there's a third bride that is extremely hard to get, and is the one that most people don't pick. So I thought it was really funny that they were having a little argument about like, hey, don't forget about her either. <laughs> um. Uh, I liked when Kentucky immediately assumed that he was going to have sex with that courtesan. <laughs> uh, instantly. <laughs> instantly. He's like, you know what, I have to get it all ready. Like, the way he anticipates waiting in bed is really funny. The way he just immediately goes under the cover, he's like, oh, I'm so nervous. And the dead look he gives the second he sees it's a wine. Like, he freezes, he gets completely frozen solid. And then he's used as a hockey puck before Sequoia stops him with her foot and says, where the hell do you think you're going? Uh, I like when that old lady had a seizure and starts breakdancing and sh- they start backing her up because, like, oh, this is her famous dance. Yeah, they're dancing. playing music. Yeah, she <laughs> you know, busts uh, bus out the little guitar thing and starts playing for her as she's going. Um, I like when she says, like, you know, I may be old, but, you know, I still have a lot of techniques that these old, these your courtesans can't do. And then she immediately falls and her dentures fall on Gintoki's crotch and he says, what kind of technique is this? Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, one of the first uh, Twitter gifts. If you look up Gintama gifts on Twitter, really, like one of the yeah. So if you look up Gintama, or maybe it, it, maybe it's Gintoki. Hang on, because it used to come up all the time, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah. So if you look up Gintoki, it's like the one of him turning around, and then one of him taking his nose, and like uh, like him doing the wave from Benny Zakura, and then one of them is him getting his dick bit by the dentures. It's like one of the first ones. Oh my god, why is Twitter acting so shitty right now? One moment, I'm trying to look up Gintoki. There we go. Holy shit, you're right! <laughs> it yeah, is just like right... The first ones. Oh yeah, these, these perfectly encapsulate them perfectly. <laughs> That's funny. I did not know that, but I, I really did like that bit uh, when it brought, when it started bidding off of him. I like the beginning part of here. The, so there's a really big moon motif throughout this entire arc, um, where they're talking about specifically the moon, and they say that um, a lot of people in Yoshiwara treat the moon as if it is a. It, it was kind of like the Yoshiwara is not a place for most people. It is a place where men and women go to lie to each other and they get to dream for a single night and then it all disappears in the morning. And the way that that Sequoia sees her is like this is a courtesan who is not um, waking up from her dream and she refuses to wake up from it. 
And so I really like that when Suki starts doing it, that she's specifically called uh, the the Moon of Yoshiwara. So she's actually trying to. Um, it's like a double. What is what is the word I'm looking for? It's a nice meaning to it of saying specifically this woman is super looking to the moon, and then the person who considers herself the moon is trying to fulfill her request. I thought it was a very well done um, stuff like that. Uh, I like that we finally got to learn that the name of that sword lady's name, which I think is Nob- Nobume. No, no, Nobume. Uh, yeah, Nobume, the the assassin. Lady. Nobume, yeah. yes. I specifically said I don't think they ever said her name when we saw her last, <laughs> but now I do know it because they've said it. So there we go. And then the, in general, I like them when the shogun shows up. I like it whenever the shogun is there. I think the the second I saw the shogun, I said this is the perfect time for the shogun to show up. <laughs> Because it is at the worst part of him getting the maximum damage in it. So, really good start of the episode. Let's go on to the next one. Episode 258, which is called Inside the Palace. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so, Gintoki's like, oh shit, oh god, I hit the Shogun with the can. And then the uncle, the guy they're trying to find, ends up visiting, like, right when they knock him out. And they're like, oh shit. Um... So he's like, whatever, I'm just, I'm going in. And, but Sukoya's like, we, we can't run away. We have to pretend that he's fine, because that way we can talk to the guy we need to talk to. Uh, so they make Gintoki, like, wear him, like, a shirt. And he's, like, talking, and he's like, oh, I'm good. And he's, and the Shogun's just passed out, like, as he's hanging from him. Mm-hmm. Like, um, very weekend at Bernie's, like. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh,. Sada Sada comes in, and we learn a little bit of backstory about the uh, retainer dude and everything. Um, they keep trying to hide uh, from the, the fact that he is unconscious. Uh, so eventually, he like they. I don't remember exactly how it happens, but they end up like getting the underwear from the shogun onto Gintoki's head. It, it happens. Um, it happens because when they t- he goes to go up to talk about the, all the Mimor Gumi that are near him, and then Gintoki asks like, "Do I ha- can I just sit here?" And they tell him, "No, you can't." So he, he's forced to like stand up and go there. And then while he's there and he's like telling the backstory of why he doesn't trust it, he's like screwing around with the Shogun, and then the Shogun like falls out of where he's at. So he grabs him by the underwear, and that results in him getting tossed backwards, and he has the underwear on his head, and they hide the Shogun inside the plant. That's how it ends up happening. Yeah. So the the Shogun ends up in the plant and they call it like a bushy thing because it's just <laughs> his dick up in the plant um gintoki is uh wearing the underwear on his head and they try to play it off like it's uh sukoyo's mm-hmm. and then the old shogun is like hey did you always have this much hair and gintoki's like no the hair was in the underwear <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he gets hit with a sukoyo knife immediately for that. <laughs> uh, instantly yeah um Eventually, uh, Sukoyo asks about Suzuron while they're telling the story, and they reveal that um, Suzuron was basically used to get Sada Sada's political enemies, and then they, uh, he would have them killed. Um, Issa Burrow's like, you guys should really get out of here. This is like not a. He's talking to um, Kagura and Shimpachi, and he's like, you guys should really get out of here. This is some serious shit. And then he gets stabbed. From in like in the back, uh, with a sword through a window, and it turns out that they're all like getting attacked, and um, Sada Sada frames them for uh, murdering him, and it, like it makes them as like political enemies or whatever, and has them to be executed the following morning. The Mimoari Gumi gets uh, fired and replaced with the Shinsen Gumi as the protection for the castle, while Isaburo's in the hospital. Um, they're like, all right, let's go. It, it's Kondo and uh, Hichikata. And they're like, all right, let's go see these criminals. And only for it to be Gintoki and all of them. Mm. And Kondo at one point uh, farts. And as he's leaving, Gintoki goes, hey, the police captain shit himself. <laughs> and Kondo goes, hey, how did you know? <laughs> um, yeah, because he kind of says something doesn't smell right, and he goes like, "Oh no!" Yeah. and he tells him like yeah. the serious business, and he goes like, "Oh, thank God!" <laughs> yeah, I thought I, I thought he smelled it. Um, we learn a little bit more about the past where um, 
Suzuran ended up needing to go into Yoshiwara like to to hide basically to like protect her from getting killed as a political pawn or whatever. Um, the old man is begging for the current shogun to like stand up to him because there's you know the the old shogun's a bad guy as we now know. Um, but then the old shogun shows up and is like, oh, you know, the, you're you're betraying me or whatever. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of you. Doing evil schemer stuff. Um, Okita talks to Gintoki and them and then eventually tells the other group. Um, and then... Ah, uh, oh, God, I don't remember. They... He, like, has a donut and the assassin woman attacks him for it's it a, a, and there's, yeah, like, a, a whole big... Yeah, it's a pondering. Yeah. Um... And then we find out that the uh, the old man, I think, was the uh, or I, I don't remember if this is exactly where we find out, but the old man yeah, was the so, one who. So, so what happens is that is that the the shogun sister starts telling a story to help him go to sleep, and in the story she talks about specifically a, sh- a shogun who married a beautiful princess and the the shogun treated him badly, but then what ended up happening was that the retainer fell in love with her. And they could never be together. And she's basically telling his backstory through like a little kid story that she that he would always tell her. And then right before she's about to get the ending, Gintoki stands up and says, "Like we know where the story goes from here." And that's how they learn from that he was the one previously. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, "Oh, Suzuran's still alive, you know. She's in Yoshiwara, but she's gonna die before you ever get the chance to see her." And then he gives him a little dagger, and he's like, "So why don't you commit seppuku uh, as penance for betraying me, and then you can go meet her as well?" Um, Sukoyo uh, interrupts the princess, who's telling a story uh, about like the past, uh, the you know the the thing that you just said, mm-hmm. basically. And they're like, "Nah, we know how the story ends," and they decide that they're gonna. Um, they're going to go and do Gintoki justice things. Uh, it turns out that the Shinsengumi had tossed the keys in during the weird pretend fight that they were having. Uh, so they open the cell, and uh, they all decide that they're going to like essentially rebel against the government just in the name of this old woman. Um, Sukoyo's like, I can't believe I got you guys involved in this. I'm so sorry. And Gintoki's like, nah, we were, we were already involved. And he holds his pinky up that has the promise hair from the old lady on it. Uh, then they all make a little promise again that they will uh, survive and, and see each other after all of this stuff uh, goes on. So they all like tie hair around each of their fingers. Um, and there's a funny scene where they're all pulling out the hair, and Gintoki uses his nose hair instead and gets an immediate Sequoia <laughs> knife to the head again. Uh, and then after they make the promise, um, the wait, that's I think wait does the assassin girl reveal that she's with them at the end of this one or the beginning of the next one? I believe it is... Uh, I, I think she's there, but she reveals it, I think, in the next episode, if I remember correctly. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, because there, there yeah, are... Yeah, this one ends with the promise, then. Yeah, this one ends with... Because there are five, but it, it, it the episode ends with four of them, because it's Gintoki, Shinpachi, Kagura, and Sukoyo making the promise, and then she's the fifth one. Because the next episode is titled literally, like, The Five Pinkies, I think. Uh, but yeah, so that's where this one ends. How would you like this one, Zen? Uh, it was good. The ending was really cute. I like when uh, any time that the the heroes have that like, uh oh, we have to do justice things moment. Um, it's really good. It was good in this one too. I'm, I, I'm yeah, that that moment from when they're telling the story and Sequoia is the first one to like, she's the first one to show like, wait a minute, this is about, and they realize they actually get the full backstory without being told by the old man. And yeah, the the way he just straight up goes like, "You don't have to tell us. We know where the story goes." Oh, it's a <laughs> badass way. Cause like that's the way he tells it. That's not the way it's actually gonna end. We're gonna actually end the story right here. We're gonna get the ending. Um, they they do a little bit in the next episode, a little bit more about it. But yeah, I really do like the beginning of it here because they're like, I think they bring up the fact that we're about to basically topple a nation because we're gonna be going after the fucking shogun of all people (laughs) like this is a this is a huge deal i think i can't remember if it's in the beginning of this episode or at the end of this one where he goes like man if only kotzer could see me right now (laughs) because they're legitimately going to go take on the the shogun 
Yeah, I, I, I also really like this episode. It's a good, like, uh, lead up to the next episodes while still having some funny bits. Um, there's a really good bit where, um, right before, I think it's when, it's like the aftermath of the kick the can where Isaburo is going to go look for the people who were hiding. He goes like, oh yeah, I went to go find him. I shot Grampy. And then they show him like shooting the grandpa for whatever reason. And then he goes like, and then I found Shimpachi. You know, it's you shouldn't have been hiding. I could have shot the princess. And the, the way he goes for shooting Shimpachi is so fucking funny. Because he unloads and then he reloads. And then he goes back to shooting him. And then he, he does it like three times where he just like removes the cartridges. Reloads the gun and then just goes back to shooting him. <laughs> Like, it's the little animation of him just going, yep, okay, out of bullets, okay, back to shooting. <laughs> it's a very deliberate thing that I thought was super funny. Um, I like that there's actually a bit here where Kondo gets uh, serious, because after they learn, I, because I, the it's before she tells the story, but they learn basically, like, hey, what's happening here is going to be, it's, like, really suspicious, and it's really bad, and it looks really bad. And Kondo is basically saying, like, the way that we were specifically taught is that we live by the samurai code. And you tell me what part of any of this is living by a samurai code. I am uninterested in, like, being a fake samurai. We follow the code. And Hijikata's like, dude, you have to realize that we're backwater samurais. Like, the only reason that we're in power is because of the shogun. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> I, we stand for something. We're supposed to mean something. And I thought that was actually really... Like, he actually gets legitimately mad at Hijikata for it. He's like, that this isn't right. None of this is right. Um, and Hijikata's the one who's trying to be like, that. I understand that you're frustrated, but you have to look at it like from a political point of view. And he's just like, no, fuck that. I don't want to look at any of that. I know what's right and what's wrong. I thought that was cool, especially because this is the same episode where he said he shit himself, that they also let him have a moment like this. Um, I really like the backstory of the retainer. I thought it was really well done. I like that. The So uh, at what point did you realize that the Shogun was not actually the dude? Because I want to say it was around the time where he w it looked like he was crying and I said, it's not him. Uh, well, when he when he turns around and he's like, gross because when they're originally doing it and he's like oh yeah i remember her and then i forget what he says something nasty some freak thing he, he does he's um, like oh yeah i remember the blood on her hand i want to lick the blood like that's when it's the 100%. yeah yeah i was like oh okay it's not him because <laughs> right. yeah it's not very it's not very gintama to end the arc with their like they wouldn't make the reveal that this guy's actually evil and then the old lady dies in misery right like that's not a gintama ending yeah. um so so i was like oh yeah that's not the guy that's not the dude. That's that's not the dude. I think it was sometime after they started shooting Shimpachi, he says something. Like, I think the old man says something. And I said, I'm starting to think that it's actually him and not the old Shogun. I have, like, specifically in the notes, I think Gramps might be the guy and not the old Shogun. Uh, another bit is that when they're imitating the Shogun, um, there's, a, there's a lot of good bits when they're doing it. But when he's imitating the Shogun... Uh, the, the girl who's with him, no, Nobu, which is not her, no, no, Nobume, she starts doing a Shogun impression, but she's unable, she's, like, copying him perfectly, but she's unable to actually, like, say words without ending the sentence with Shogun, so she keeps going, oh, Shogun, Shogun, like, he's a Pokemon of some kind, he finds... Yeah, he keeps saying it at the end of everything, and yeah. I think Kentucky even says, like, do you just say Shogun every time <laughs> you do anything? Yep, basically, um... I like that bit. There's also a, another bit. I want to say it's at the start of it. I can't remember it at the moment. It was a lot. There was a lot of good bit with the shogun pretending to be uh, this the, the being what it was, especially the the pube joke where I was just like, that's a very good pube joke, and then he immediately gets hit by it. I'm like, that's fair enough. It was worth it though <laughs> to say the joke. Um, and okay, yeah, really good episode. Oh, no, there's a bit where right before the end, uh, the princess says a dirty joke, and Kintoki slaps Kagura and says, like, what are you teaching her? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He's like, what do you hit me for? They're, like, on the rooftop, yeah. Yeah, he's on the rooftop. He's like, what are you teaching her? He's like, what are... he's like we raised you better than that. And she's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, anything I learned to tell her, I learned from you, Kintoki. Uh, that's a really good bit. I also liked it. Well, that this is what it was. It was when, uh, when we actually learned why the retainer is missing his arm. 
because I was, I realized like oh he didn't have an arm last one, and then I said that's why I could I couldn't see the pinky thing is because he doesn't have the arm anymore. <laughs> they took it away mm-hmm. from him. I was like oh that's a that's a fucked up way of hiding that he doesn't have the because <laughs> the way to actually find him would be find the the pinky thing, but the fact that the arm was gone, uh, they couldn't show it. I thought it was a very good way of doing it. And before we move on to the next episode, there is a little end bit thing where they are talking about their movie as they're trying to hype it up. And Gintoki is very nervous because he says, I don't know, man, a One Piece movie came out this year. And then next up, we got uh, Hunter x Hunter and Dragon Ball. I think we need a Pokemon lead in. I think that's really going to help our our sales if we have a Pokemon movie right before our movie. <laughs> that way it'll be yeah, better. Yeah, I think Kagura is like, yeah, we should have him put on right next to the Pokemon movie. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> and Jibachi goes, no, there's so many problems with that. What I was going to ask you, this is 2013, do you know, you don't know what the One Piece movie, the One Piece movie he's talking about is called Film Z, do you know what the Hunter x Hunter movie and the Dragon Ball movie would be for 2013? 2013. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember the names of the Hunter x Hunter movies, because um, I've, I've only seen them like once. Um, no, is it the Kurapika one? That's the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. You would have to, eyes. Uh, you'd have to tell me. Uh, maybe because again, I don't know anything about Hunter X Hunter. It's called Phantom right, Rouge. Hunter X Hunter Phantom Rouge. Is this the one where Kurapika loses his fucking eyes? I'm gonna say yes because on this poster he's got like the the eyesight. I know that he loses. Don't don't freak out because it. it I know because it's literally unavoidable. Yeah, but this one, it is that one. Yeah. Yeah. He it's it's non-canon. He gets them back. It's fine. Oh really? Um. I didn't yeah, know that that was non canon. I didn't like, know that. Non canon. Yeah, no. Okay, so he doesn't. So he really can say, I see, when he says it back to him. I got you. All right. Yeah. Um, and then 2013 for Dragon Ball would be um, Battle of the Gods. That is correct. It was Battle of that's God. the year that Dragon Ball, like, the Renaissance began. Oh, yeah. Battle of Gods. That was a hell of a movie. That was, funny enough, Battle of Gods is the reason why I was uh, got back into Dokkan. Um, because my friend, I, at this point, if you don't know, the, the dark ages of Dragon Ball, people will complain to you now about, like, ah, they don't promote Daima. You didn't live with the fucking dark age that was just the 2000s era of Dragon Ball shit up until Battle of Gods came out, where there was nothing but, like, fighting games, and that's it. <laughs> that was that was all you got for that period. Like, the post-GT slumber was real. Um... But when a friend of mine said, like, you should see Battle of Gods, because I was a big fan of Dragon Ball Z back in the day, and I said, like, you know what, I'll try it. I really did like Dragon Ball Z, but then they lost me with a lot of the movie stuff, but I'm going to try this one. And Battle of Gods literally reinvited all the love I had for Dragon Ball. It was, like, that much. <laughs> it's a really good-ass yeah, movie. Battle of the Gods went crazy. It, it was so good. It was, so, it, was, it was crazy good. It was uh, great stuff. So I can see why they'd be a little bit afraid of that is what you're specifically going against. One Piece that is oh so big, uh, Hunter x Hunter is big. So I don't know how good that movie is. And Battle of Gods, I would also be kind of afraid. That, that's a that's a kind of an insane lineup of three dudes. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. It is. So let's Wait, move. What on. was the what was the Pokemon movie for twenty thirteen? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see. I can look at it. It is quick. Genesect and the Legend Awakened. So says the internet. Um, I never saw the Genesect one, so I don't know how good that one is. I can tell you how much I care about the Genesect Legendary, which is a big factor. And if I see a Pokemon movie. <laughs> Which is, I think Genesect is a cool looking dude, but not one I would see a movie based off of. How do you feel, Zed? That's fair. Uh, yeah, he's okay. I'm not my favorite. I don't hate him, but he's not my favorite. No, I'm not, I, I, I have no beef with Genesect. I don't want to insult the man in his work. I'm just going to say, personally, not for me. But I can understand him getting a movie. Um, especially around that time <laughs> for Pokemon. But anyway, that's enough. So, so, so stay forward to when we actually just watch all the Pokemon movies or when we get to Genesect's movie. <laughs> talk about genesect but for right now we're going to talk about episode 259 which is called five pinkies so uh we make, we get the promise again assassin lady is like i'm coming along too um doing my my job for the mimawari gumi um they come up with a plan to pretend the princess is a hostage so that they can get let in, uh, and they're like, "We're gonna, we're gonna cut off one of her fingers every time someone talks. Everybody, shut the fuck up!" 
and the princess <laughs> talks, and they're like, we said to shut up, and then they pretend to cut off her fingers, so, like, the assassin lady slashes her and blood goes everywhere. <laughs> and all the guards are like, oh, god, okay, yeah, fine. Um, only to reveal that she had, like, blood bags the whole time. Um, and <laughs> Shinpachi's like, oh, god, this is this is not right. <laughs> We're gonna be looked at as some such bad traitors. Yeah. Um, they all work their way through the palace trying to save the old man, the retainer old man. Um, she falls and hits her head, and they think she's dead for a minute. And then with her blood as, like, her last message, she writes odd jobs in blood <laughs> on the stairs, which was really funny. Uh, but she's fine. Um, the They end up fighting a shitload of guards, and they're fighting them off even through, like, cannons and Gatling guns and stuff. Um, they end up busting in, and they find Sada Sada there, and he's like, ah, you know, you can't I'm evil, you can't beat me. Um, Sokoya throws her daggers at him, and it gets blocked by a monk dude with, you know, like, the basket head monks. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're, like, an assassin cult that serves the the shadows. Um, After the Oni Wobanshu, basically, they they broke up the Oni Wobanshu, and then they use this cult instead, which are the, the Naraku... The Naraku yeah. cult. Ten Shoin Naraku, um, but we'll call him Naraku from here on in. Yeah, it's I'll, easier. I'll, yeah, I'll remember him. That's the Inuyasha guy. Naraku. Yeah, in- Inuyasha bad guy. <laughs> I think they even have a spider logo thing. Yes, they do. Um, and so they're like, okay, you can have the old man. But then he cut off the old man's other arm. And he's like, yeah, you can have him as he's dying. So he's like super fucked up now. Um, he goes on this rant about how, like, you can't ever judge heaven. You can only look up at it while heaven judges you and all this stuff, because he's, like, saying it's better than everything. Um, Gintoki snaps, as he does, and goes to rush him, and he gets saved by the monk dude, uh, and Gintoki does the coolest shit ever, where the guy swings his sword at him, and he catches it in his teeth and breaks it. <laughs> so it's cool. so sick. So unbelievably um, sick. It's so sick. And he also, like, stabs his sword through the guy's basket head. Um, And they're fighting a bit, and then the basket comes off. um, And it's revealed that he is, like, an old fighter from the revolutionary time. And, like, he knows that Gintoki is the white Yaksha, and they have, like, history together. Um, Gintoki takes a poison needle to a pressure point, and it's revealed that he's going to die if they don't get the needle out and treat him. Because it's poisoned. Yeah, it's a poison needle. Um, Kentoki just gets fucked up more by the bad guy whose name is Oboro because he's poisoned and weakened and he, the guy's just kicking his ass. Um, he's just kind of stuck there, paralyzed, watching the gang slowly get overwhelmed by the enemies. And then um, the uh, Mimawari Gumi show up to save uh, Gintoki, Sukoyo, and Nobume while the Shinsen Gumi show up and save Kagura and Shinpachi, who are fighting the samurai guards outside. Mm-hmm. And uh, before that, this is important, uh, Boru is also giving uh, the the backstory for Gintoki, <laughs> where he's telling them about the, specifically the Kansai Purge and uh, where he came from and how he fought in the Joai Wars. Like, that, the only reason I bring this up is because this is the first time we've actually got it confirmed after 259 episodes. Oh, is it really the first time? I thought they've called him that before. No, I don't think... that. They, I don't remember the Kansai... The, 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 the White Yaksha, we've heard before, but in terms of specifically the Kansai Purge and the, jo- the Joai Wars and talking about the what led to why they were specifically fighting we didn't know why they were fighting we just knew that they were jo- that there was a Joai Wars and then they say specifically the reason they were fighting is that they were trying to get back um they were students who were uh, led by a, um they were the students of someone who was like an arrested dis- uh dis- d- dissident is that what it's called yeah dissident which was the the teacher which is yo- then we finally get his name which is the Yoshida Shoyu and then that's when he starts getting angry and he starts fighting him but this is the first time that we actually see that backstory in like fuller detail than we've ever gotten it before <laughs> because this is that's what he's using to um taunt him as he's fighting him um 
Like they show they 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 straight up show like what is I assume the ending of that, which is they literally delivered his mas there's his master's head to the three of them. Like there's a it's like a short scene, but there's like a small scene where Gintoki, Katsura, and Takatsuji are surrounded by something, and there's clearly a head, and it's the master's hair right on it. It's like so quick of like they just show it and then it goes away. Um, so yeah, that's where we get the backstory for this. Oh, interesting. Yes. So, how'd you like this episode, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was good. I like the uh, the setup. I like having an enemy from Gintoki's past. Uh, I like just general douchey ruler people. Mm-hmm. They're they're always good villains. They are. Um, I was a big fan. Yeah, yeah. I I, I really like this one. Um, I like the uh, the beginning when they're all coming together and they're being like, "All right, let's go take down a nation," and they're fighting it. And there's like a moment where all the women get to fight and they're like we're gonna fight back and stop this nation that's built on the tears of women uh which is really good where literally all three of them get to just beat the fuck out of a whole bunch of them and saying like this is what you get for condescending to us and then Kentucky and Shipachi go like oh yeah you think you can handle us we live with them <laughs> we you, you're not any match for us which is really funny um and yeah, the bit with the sister at the beginning where they're cutting her off is really funny as well. When they're just like, hey, uh, he's like, anyone who talks, cut it off. And they cut off and there's blood everywhere. And then he goes like, okay, we'll let you through. Oh, yeah, did you just say something to me? That's another finger gone. And she keeps cutting away at them, which is really yeah, funny. Yeah, it's to the point where the guards are like, oh, my God, stop. Yeah, there's not. they're like, oh, wait, there's nothing left. <laughs> stop, please stop. Really funny. Uh, yeah, then the the bit when he's angry and they're like, they get back the old man who's had both of his arms ripped off and the asshole Shogun is saying like, even now if he even gets to her, how is he going to hold her? He doesn't have any arms left. Um, he has no way to even feel it if he was there, but it doesn't matter because they're both going to die. And the way the fucking, the eye he gets, which is the same eye he got when, um, during the... Uh, previous big arc was really cool. He goes up there, and then, yeah, just like you said, when you bite the fucking sword, I was immediately going like, yeah, fuck yes! Yeah, that shit was so sick. <laughs> it is unbelievably sick, and it really shows uh, the demon side of him. Whenever he starts, like, when he fights, and it's like, no, I'm not fighting like a samurai. I'm literally just fighting you like a fucking crazed demon is <laughs> always really good. And I like when he goes to stab the dude in the head with the sword. He gets the Shogun as well, and they go both get backed off. And to be fair to the Shogun, the Shogun's like fucking no selling it, no fear in his eyes as he goes like, hmm, very funny. It makes him a very good, like, I want to see this guy fucking die. Because <laughs> every time he gave that little shitty smile, I was like, oh, you, you need to fucking die so bad. Um... Another thing that I really liked here, which is what, um, another thing that is related to the, the motif going on with the moon, I think, if I remember correct, the, is it, no, maybe I'm getting this wrong, I'm pretty sure that the dude who, Oboro calls himself the sun, he says, like, I'm the sun that's going to light and do something like that, he says something related to the sun, so I thought it was a very nice, like, this is a sun versus moon conversation currently going on here. Very, uh, very nice, very well done. Also, I also like the the framing of how uh, this is uh, a lot of things in, um, Gintama, which probably this the exchange helps a whole lot, is that it's assumed that Gintoki's crew is already living through hell, so that they are the ones who are actually rebelling against heaven. It's a very similar like Monkey King type feeling, and it it actually does feel like that a lot of the times whenever they're fighting against someone, it doesn't feel like. They're the forces of, like, heaven. They're not, like, pointed out as, like, the good guys. It's like, no, we're the dudes who are forced to live in hell, and we're gonna bring hell to you! <laughs> it is not a case of someone falling down here. We're bringing it to you. I think it's always really cool. Um, and, yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed all the hearing the backstory about them, about how they were, like, the last samurai, and you get to see, like, in Toki as he's being restrained as, like, they're taking away the his master and he literally can't move and he's trying to, like, go forward a little bit, which is also a reference back to the OP in this one where he's, like, trying to move forward to catch up to his master again, 
which I thought was really nice. All very well done in this classic Gintama way of things coming back to each other in some kind of way. <laughs> um... And yeah, I uh, I understood a after I saw that they literally gave the master's head to them. I was like, okay, I can kind of see why Takasuji is the way he is. Because if you gave me the dude who like taught me everything, and then I fought for him, and I went through all hell trying to get him back, and then this ended with you just sending me his head, I would also want to burn everything down. <laughs> Very understandable. And I also hear on my notes at the end, this is the only time I'll ever be happy that the police showed up. And it's specifically whenever the Shinsen Gumi and the Miller Gumi showed up. So yeah, good episode. Let's go on to the next one, which is episode 260, which is called Pinky Swear. Go ahead, Zen. It's episode 260, the... Fucking what are the Mimawari Gumi and them are all there. Um, Sada Sada is escaping to the roof while they end up. Uh, the the fighting continues because the Mimawari Gumi guy shot Gintoki, but he actually shot him with an antidote to the poison. Um, so he's still like on their side. Gintoki goes up to chase him down, and Sukoyo and the assassin girl go too. Uh, while the rest of the Mimawari Gumi are not allowing any of the other monks to like follow them, so they can go alone. Um, eventually Kagura and Shinpachi are like overrun and then Kondo's like actually if you hurt them you're the rebels against the government because the order is to be uh, they're, they're executed tomorrow not today so we're, they're under our protection until tomorrow uh, the guards are like fuck that so they end up just fighting the Shinsengumi I'm pretty sure yep um, they uh, end up chasing up the, the staircase after them um, and Oboro's like oh wow the two police forces are working together that's crazy and um, Sada Sada's like hey get the rest of the cops and we're gonna we're gonna deal with this right now only for them to end up showing up with Matsudaira who's <laughs> shooting cannons at them Giving um, his classic catchphrase, a man only needs the number one. Yeah, because he, yeah, he, he says, I'm going to count to three, and then he says one and fires, and then he's like, the man, <laughs> a man only needs number one to get through life. Um, and then it's revealed that the current Shogun is leading this charge, and he's like, you know, I, I know that you're uh, the bad guy here, and we're going to stop you. And then the old Shogun is like, no, I created Japan, etc. I, I did everything. I saved the country, yada, yada. Um, and it's revealed that the, the original plan was to just have the current Shogun be a puppet for him uh, while he continues ruling, but he's grown wise to the fact that he's a bad guy and he's turned on him. Um, they're originally going to call the rest of like the Naraku cult people, um, but then he's like, well, if we do that, they're, I'm just going to get killed by them anyway. Like, we can't we can't, we have to, like, I can't abandon Japan or whatever because I did everything to get all this power, blah, blah, blah. Um, then they end up uh, saying let's go to Yoshiwara because we're going to kill Suzuran because I just really hate these two old people <laughs> like, I just fucking hate them so much um, we're going to go and kill them only for them to get revealed at the last minute that Gintoki, Sukoyo, and Noba may have arrived uh, and they're stopping them from getting onto the airship uh, Nobume destroys the airship by cutting through its like core and it explodes while Gintoki is fighting um, Oboro. It's a really cool fight. They're like falling down a fucking like uh, Gintoki blocks his needles and he's like, oh, you blocked my needles. And then he hits him with the needles and he's like, oh, you stole my needle technique. And then uh, he's like, but I can expel poison. It doesn't work on me. Um, and then Gintoki knocks him off the roof, and they're both falling off. Um, they break their swords, like, on each other. So they both clash swords together, and they break. Um, Gintoki goes to grab the broken piece of his sword, while the other guy kicks the broken piece of his through Gintoki's forearm. But Gintoki had thrown the sword all the way down into the the uh like the roof underneath them as they're falling and he grabs oboro and positions him so that he gets uh stabbed by the sword as they fall so he like lands on it mm -hmm. uh very cool 
very Batman if you played that game. Yes, and then the the, <laughs> the amazing line he says to him, "Say hello to my sensei for me." <laughs> yes. <hell? laughs> oh, great stuff. Um, and then it ends with them looking. Yeah, that's right. It ends exactly with the fight as everything's that's okay. Uh, how'd you like this episode, Zen? Very cool. Awesome fighting. Uh, the fight, like, animation has been sick in these past few. Yes. Uh, it's been really cool. The 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 plummeting fight was awesome. The slamming the guy into the broken sword was awesome. It was, like, a million out of ten. Cool fight. It was, yes. It was the, the payoff of everything that was going on here. It was amazing. The way that they're fighting and he, like, sh the, the way... Th it's funny because, again, Gintoki makes fun of his series himself. He's like, we're really not... I don't have any techniques. I don't have anything like that. But instead, it's, it's replaced with just insane levels of violence that you have never seen perforated on people to make it really cool. Like, a good example is that when, after Gintoki gets shot... um. And it looks like that um, they were betrayed by uh, Isabura, and uh, Suki goes to go check on him. And she's able to deflect one of the monks, but then she doesn't see the one behind him. Uh, Gintoki immediately wakes up and then <laughs> stabs this dude with a wooden sword for the fucking stomach. Yeah. And <laughs> it goes right through his stomach. Right through his stomach. And then I had... A, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Kung Pao Enter the Fist, but there's a moment in... The, remember that part where he goes like, damn, how does he even do that to someone when he punches a guy and, like, it literally comes off as, like, a thread? He's like, I don't even understand yeah. how that happens. Like, there's organs and bones and shit inside there. That was my feeling when I saw it. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that hurts. And I was like, damn, that's great. But, yeah, they... They make up for it by having some amazing fight scenes that are just extremely, like, violent in a way that's like, well, I may not have a Kamehameha, but what I do have is the ability to fuck you up. And I think that makes a lot of these fights really cool. <laughs> like, when he's fighting Oboro and he shoots him back with the needle, he's like, oh, you learned my needle technique. Well, whatever. I've already countered it. It actually makes me stronger, idiot. And he goes to throw his needles back and he sees that he actually hit the Shogun instead. <laughs> And the Shogun's there, he's like, huh? And he goes like, wait, what? And then Gintoki shows up and starts fighting him again. And then <laughs> Suki throws the um, Sada Sada up into the, I think, back to where the ship is. And then she immediately, like, stabs him in the dick with the, with the item that they have. Which is a callback to when she said earlier in the arc, I'm gonna go stab that guy in the dick. <laughs> She actually does go through with it. Uh, I love the attention to detail. Oh yeah, there. when she throws the the staff, yeah, yeah, lands right in the dick. And in the earlier episode, she said, "I'm going to kill. I'm going to rip the man's dick off." <laughs> like it's uh, amazing that they're able to call back to it. And she isn't able to rip it off, but she at least does a lot of damage to it. And yeah, this uh, great fighting, great chaos to a lot of the stuff that was going on here. Really cool. Like the ending bit fight. Same like you. Anytime you have your main character fighting and he's literally like fighting while falling off of a roof, that's just awesome. There's no denying it. I've thought about fighting like that in general in my head. And when a show is actually able to show me how it's done in animation, I go, this is how I know these people know what the fuck is going on. They know what is cool. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Great stuff. Uh, yes. And yeah, the only other notes here I say is that there is a bit here with uh, Nobume where she asks, uh, she says, the last bite of the donut is the best. And I just want to ask you, Zen, do you think that's true? I had to think about this oh, for a while. It's the first bite. It's the first bite, right? Like, it's the first bite, yeah. Yeah, the first, when you when you end the donut, that's like the sadness. The donut is gone. The donut is no longer... I'm, I'm glad that we can agree on this, because I was definitely... This is how I know her headspace is different from a normal person. Who thinks of the, the last part of the donut being the, the best part? But anyway. Uh, good stuff here. Glad we can agree on this one. Let's move on to the ending of this arc. Episode 261, Unsetting Moon. Go ahead, Zen. 261, uh, the fighting has more or less concluded um the the ad guys the naraku guys show up um as they're like oh we're gonna we're gonna take the 
the, this guy. It's fine. Only for the Shogun to show up and say, hey, this is this is an internal incident. We got this under control. And then the Shogun himself also uh, resigns, saying that I should have stopped you sooner, so I'm also resigning from my position. The aliens end up leaving, and the bad guy is arrested. Uh... They end up finding out that the Mimoari Gumi dudes were kind of trying to set up a situation where um, their leader could end up becoming the Shogun because the current family is out of there. Um, Kondo and Hichikata arrive and kind of threaten them, and they're like, you know, if you're trying to do some sneaky shit, we're gonna we're gonna take you down. Um, and he says, you know, it wasn't me. I, I didn't do nothing. Um, turns out that Oboro's body vanishes, so he's not necessarily dead. Um, we see Sada Sada in prison, and then the, the Oboro guy is like, ah, oh, you know, the, the real enemies here are the are the uh, students, the students of Shoyo. They're the the true enemies of, of everything. They're the, they're the threat. Um, we find out that the girl was part of their crew originally. She was like one of the best. She was the the, the star assassin or whatever for them. Mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of like, you know, next time we see each other, one of us is dying. You know, they have like the old standoff there. Um, and then we see the old man in the cell, and it looks like more of the monks are there, and they're going to break him out. And he's like, ah, good, you're here to break me out. And then he gets stabbed like immediately. Uh, and it turns out that it's Takasugi. Uh, <laughs> my God, this then... Takasugi's music. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, it's Takasugi's music. God. Um, and then he also does the say hello to my sensei for me in hell <laughs> thing and kills the old man. Um, and then they're all kind of trying to figure out what happened. And they're like, you know, I did the did the Naraku guys kill him? And they're like, no, I think they would have wanted uh, to save him still. Otherwise, they would have done it sooner. Um, and they're all kind of trying to figure out the politics of all that. And then we find out that Suzeron is not going to survive the night. And the group helps uh, the old man retainer escape the palace to go see her. Again, with kick the can. Because the assassin woman kicks the can like hard as shit. And she's like, alright, well, you better you better head to... Uh, Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara to get it, because it's definitely full away there. Um, he does make it there. And she looks like she's already dead, uh, but then she is still alive for like a little bit longer, and she manages to talk to him. Uh, and she's like, "Oh, you know, am I am I dreaming? And when the moon goes away, am I gonna wake up again? And you're not gonna be there." And he's he he tells her something that's along the lines of like, uh, "You're never gonna wake up from this dream. Like we're always gonna be, we're always gonna be together." And they're kind of sitting there, and um, they are having a flashback to like their younger selves sitting under the sakura tree. Uh, and they they tell each other that they love them right as the old lady dies. I'm going to be honest, when you were telling the ending again, it's, it's the line he says, it got me again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it fucking got me again. Why did I get so silent? Because I was like, oh my god, he did say that. <laughs> Beautiful, great stuff here. And then it ends with the the op plan well oh the sakura blossoms come in they've gotten so good at the, the transitions from the uh from the ending into the op as it shows you the entire arc again <laughs> oh yeah it starts with the oh man it's so good it's, oh, it's so good it's so fucking good oh my God. okay zen <laughs> how would you like this episode Ah, uh, dude, it was banger. It was so good. It might be one of my favorite episodes of the whole series ever. It was so good. Oh, it is, it is insanely good. It is, it is the the, the culmination of an arc. It, it's funny because a lot of the times when I think of the ending of an arc, for example, if you want to use some of the older ones, I I, I always like to use it because it's an easy um, way to look at it. I look at specifically Dragon Ball and I see the end of the arc. I see the end of, like, Namek and the way the way Namek ends. It usually ends with the end of the fight, and then there's just a little bit of cleanup afterwards before they start going into the next arc. I feel like Gintama really allows themselves to have, like, an entire episode to notice on the aftermath of the set arc. 
And that aftermark usually ends up being as good as the entire arc and is a really good way to bookend and close it. Like, obviously, when using the example with Namek, the ending of Namek is good and they go through it, but it never reaches the specific highs of him going through, like, Super Saiyan and that, and you never reach those emotions again. For Gintama, they really do a good job of being able to drive home what the arc was about and just, like, ending it and feeling fucking amazing as you're going through it. Oh, man. Like... And it's funny because the arcs always start with, like, the dumbest shit you've ever seen. Because this is a character who, like, Gintoki thought he was going to have sex with. And then he's like, ah, ew, it's an old lady. <laughs> and then she has a seizure. And they're like, ha, she's dancing. And then I'm, like, sitting here trying not to cry when she dies. Yes, when she dies. Not only that, the dude that she loves and the same man who delivers that fucking amazing line to her at the end, four episodes ago was saying, hit me in the ass, please. Like, it is, the way that this travels through the end, it is just an amazing culmination of everything. The way that they're able to just wrap it up is just so, yeah, it's it's hard to put into words. It's like, you literally have to watch it. It is like a master craft of it. The way that they're able to bring back the kick the can and being like, the way that they use it at the beginning of being like, oh, we're going to use this to sneak out the... We're going to use this to sneak around, and then they use it at the end to actually escape it is some great stuff. Um, I think it's in this one or the other one. I forget. It's one of the other ones. There's, like, a, a lot of good moments with the grandpa that we had not mentioned. But that moment where um, the Shogun, I think, is apologizing to him, and he says, I'm so sorry that I didn't realize the pain that you were going through this entire time. Like, I think it was in the end of the last episode. It's what triggered the Shogun to get angry at him. Because he says, like, this is the man that raised me, and I never knew that he was carrying such sorrow within him. Like, he was doing all the, like, the, the, the job that they gave him specifically is to make sure that the princess didn't escape. Not knowing all along that he was telling her he would have loved to follow her outside, but he couldn't. Like, there was just no way for him to escape, and... All this great character stuff leading up to, like, the final episode of literally every character coming together to make sure that this old man could go to Yoshiwara and make it in time, and he makes it just in time, and, like, even the the, the part where it's, they also really do a good job of making it still seem like it's something that can't happen. Like, the way that they're, like, dressing her up, and it seems like, like, Sukoyo says something pretty good at the beginning, is that Yoshiwara is a place where... People, men and women lie to each other and they get to dream and then the dream wakes up and it's over and they realize it was just a single night of something happening. And we have here a specific case of two people who actually, two, a man and a woman who'd never, who didn't lie to each other. He did say that he would see her. He did see her at the end and their dream doesn't have to end here. It actually continues on after death and it is, oh. I can't keep talking about it. It will literally, <laughs> unless you want me to keep breaking down and talking about the Go themes on, of it. Man. It is keep going on. Keep uh, going on. It is some really good. I can't. I literally. You know when I when it's good. When all I can say it's good stuff. It is fucking fantastic. I, I love every second of it. I love this. I especially like because again, this is a romance that was built up over basically five episodes. <laughs> uh-huh. There are entire romances. The uh, romance books, romance stories, whose the entire through line is not as good as this and doesn't make me feel emotional by the end. It is a masterclass of stuff working so well. And then also that final shot of them walking together away with each other at the moon. Oh, just so good. Just so good. Like you, this is definitely we're we're gonna get into like this. We're gonna talk about now just overall overall in the arc. But I feel like we've already said a lot of what we have to say about arc. I absolutely love this arc. It is a fantastic. Uh, yeah, it was arc. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. It. I'll have to think back to. I think someone did request, and I think we're gonna have to talk about it somewhere closer to after we finish Gintama, of the of trying to. It, it would be very hard to rank the arcs. Because a lot of the times, whenever we get to a really good arc, we go like, man, this is my favorite. And then I get to another Uh one like, damn, this is my favorite. This is just, (laughs) it just doesn't end. It's like having that episode where I think we're going to sit down and talk about these arcs, it's going to be really hard to rank them. Because I feel like so many of them build and you can actually feel the mangaka learning from any past episodes and just improving 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 and just making it better every single time to the point where you're just like i don't know how the fuck this just keeps getting better it's insane (laughs) it it is 
it is insane to be 261 episodes in and just being like, no, this is the arc. This is it. <laughs> this is where I feel the culmination of everything. I love it. I can't imagine anything else. And it is great stuff. And I can understand now. Remember way back when we first did Benny Zakra and people said, this is like the weak part of it. And we went like, that's insane. How? How could people end up seeing Veni Zakra as, like, the weakest of the arcs or something? I know, right? Like, it was astonishing at the time. Yes, it was astonishing. And then I get to here and I'm like, god damn, I can see why. It's not because it's bad. It's because it just gets better. <laughs> it is it is an amazing issue to have, <laughs> to be 100% real with you. And god damn, Gintama absolute goat series and we're not even done it's with just, it i know god it's so good now you can understand why we're locking in and saying no we have to finish kintama by the end of the year because <laughs> i want to see more i just want to keep going more i just want to i just want more kintama and it's also going to be really funny because i think next week i actually don't know actually no it will be another arc here but uh gonna be rough following this one <laughs> it's gonna be very tough gonna trying to follow this arc in particular uh how do you feel about this arc zen uh banger a million out of ten so mm -hmm. good fire yeah. fire absolute fire all the people who were saying i can't wait to you to get court to court son of a nation i get it now we here we're here <laughs> just like bo dallas said we're here and <laughs> we're we made it <laughs> and we feel it absolutely amazing stuff so who that is it for gintama this week hell of a week to be talking about it what's going to be happening next so just to break down and in case i'm almost 100 percent right on this let me do a quick <laughs> let me do a quick check on our series in general just to make sure that i'm not talking out of my ass when i say this uh okay yes this is episode 98. Next week will be episode 99, which will be episodes 262 to 265, which will be the Beam Sword the Beam Sword style arc, excuse me. The Beam Sword style arc followed by the last episode of Gintama for this one before there's another big break, and that will be episode 99, and then episode 100 we will be doing the movie, um, Gintama, the movie, the final chapter, Be Forever, Yorozoya. That will be the next plan. That will be the official 100th episode of Shonen Archive will be the movie that was supposed to be the ending of Gintama if it never returned. <laughs> Damn. Yes. They, I've, I've been explaining this a couple times, but basically... They didn't know if it would continue on or they would get another chance. So they basically made a failsafe that if Gintama, if the, for whatever reason, the Gintama anime did not return, then the movie could be considered the end of Gintama. Even though it's an original story and is not told in the manga, it could at least be seen as this is it. This is this is the end of it. So that's what we're going to be doing for episode 100. And then, of course, as we know now, history have decided that Gintama would be allowed to finish. <laughs> so we'll be back at episode 101 and we'll start going through the next season of Gintama. Um, and we're going to be making our way till finally getting to... I think once we get to there, we will have about 100 episodes left. Which means we will have a roundish maybe 10 episodes left of Gintama as far as this one is concerned as far as the main one that will be of the official countdown once that movie ends it means that we're not going to have that many we'll have at most maybe 11 to 12 back because we have to actually because again the movie <laughs> the series doesn't end in the anime they ended it with a movie so th when that hits that means it will be basically 12 basic episodes of shonen archive before it will be it for gintama and we will be done with it um and we will have other stuff planned for the post and maybe some other stuff leading up to it but it's getting closer and closer <laughs> to the point where we're gonna have no more gintama and that kind of makes me sad 
to be 100 percent real with you the idea of like not actually having more gintama to watch it's been a hell of a ride so far so we're gonna yeah get... i don't know what i'm gonna do when gintama's over man yeah it's it's we i guess we'll go back to kuroko <laughs> 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 We will, we will be with, after we're finished with Gintama, we will sigh and we'll go, all right, here's the next episode of Kuriko's Basketball. <laughs> uh, fun times. But that's going to be planned for next week. So join us next week for that, for Beam Sword Style Arc and episode 265. Uh, now it's time to do the ending bits of the show. As always, if you want to show support, Watching is pretty good, good enough. Leaving a like, doing a comment. You never have to worry because I have Fate Grand Order, and right now things are popping off as far as that's concerned, um, which is really nice. But if you want to support us in more more other ways, you can go over to Zen Channel, where, Den's, where Zen does Shonen and Chill, and he also did something else. So go ahead, Zen, tell us what's going on in your channel. Uh, Shonen and Chill still going on. We got the Patreon back up where we do, uh, well, I guess where I do, uh, Zen's Book Corner. We just did Dan to Dan for that. Nice. Uh, so check that out. It's also up on the channel. You can check out anytime. If you want to suggest a series for it, you can hit up the Patreon. If you just want to watch, it goes up early on the Patreon and then goes up on YouTube later on uh, in the weekend. Okay. Let me ask and, you this uh, as a as a, a shorthand, but obviously they should watch the video to hear more about it. I'm curious to hear, did you ever get over the your extreme dislike of the first chapter of Dan Dan? I still hate the first chapter, but mm -hmm. the rest of it is good enough that I'm okay. okay. Everything up to when Turbo Granny is, is defeated uh, sucks. But then after that, I'm like, okay, this goes pretty hard. Mm -hmm. it, it's worth it in the end. I know. I, I was very interested because uh, I remember when Dan Dan released, and a lot of people were going like, "Oh man, this is crazy!" And then you were the <laughs> you're the most proponent of like, "This is garbage." <laughs> what are you? Yeah, no, the, that opening sucks, man. It's real bad. Yeah, yeah, you were not the biggest fan of it. I remember that. I was remember going like, "Damn!" Was, I mean, I can't really fight back against it because those are all things that are understandable to dislike about <laughs> an opening chapter. But I was actually very curious to hear if you were able to go through it. I'm glad to hear that you did. I need to rem I need I need to remember the anime coming out reminded me that I need to get back to reading it because I did read it for a while and then it's not on the Shonen Jump Plus app or anything I think or something. Uh, like it that. is now. Apparently, it just went on it today. Holy shit! It was already on Manga Plus, but now it's on the Shonen Jump Vault app as well. It was probably that they saw after what Chainsaw Man did. They said, "How come we're not on this fucking thing?" And they yeah, said, right. They said, all right, you know what? Fair point. <laughs> and they let them in. <laughs> like, all the all the series that were held back, they said, okay, but you let this on. And they're like, oh, okay, let, let, let them in. <laughs> let them in. <laughs> Chainsaw Man continuing its duty. So there you go. Go to Zen's channel to see more of uh, all that good manga talk stuff. Uh... As for me, like I said, you can go to my channel. I do fake grand order things. There's the anniversary going on. Things are going crazy. Uh, I did a summon video with my brother. That was really fun. Um, yeah, for the, you know, I, I assume the the crossover here. Funny enough, there should be a decent amount of crossover because uh, a lot of the stuff, the some of the Japanese references in Gintama, I only un understand because of fake grand order. Like when he said Nobu Nobu, I said I was like, oh, okay, he's talking about. Uh, Nobukatsu, the Nobuka not Nobukatsu. Uh, sh um, I just said I knew about him, and then I immediately forgot because I call him only by Nobu, uh, Nobunaga. There you go. I know there. Were, this is a reference to Nobunaga and his specific going through here, and I was like, okay, that's cool. I understand that part. Um, I have other stuff going on. I did release that pinball thing. I finished Gundam. I was heavily debating doing. Oh a yeah, video. I saw some Gundam screenshots. That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, I was debating doing a. Maybe making a video just talking about my experience going through Gundam. Uh, cause did you ever see original Mobo Suit Gundam Zen? Um, I've seen like episodes of it on like Adult mm -hmm. Swim back in the day, but I've never like sat down and watched through okay. it. It gets real crazy by the end of it. <laughs> There's some uh greater stuff going on with humanity and time and space is being talked about. And psychic battles are happening in the middle of Gundam battle, <laughs> in the middle of mobile suit battles. 
uh, characters have psychic powers now, and I was watching it going, this is insane, but this is some great stuff. And then Big Zam shows up, and Big Zam gets, like, jobbed out. Yeah, ladies. Big Zam. <laughs> Big Zam. I literally went, oh, man, it's Big Zam. And then the episode later was, like, called Big Zam's Last Stand, and I said, no, Big Zam. <laughs> what do you mean Big Zam only had one episode? <laughs> what the two episodes? That was so sad. But uh, it was a fun experience getting to see all the different Gundams. I got to meet Gog. I got to meet the aquatic members of the Xeon Force, <laughs> which were... I, you heard of mobile suits in space and mobile suits on air, but what about the... <laughs> what about ones that are only water-based? <laughs> and that's when they introduced the absolute unit that is God. Oh, you know what? I have to show you this because I watched it multiple times. Uh, it, this is the ending shot of Gundam that I think you should see. That is, when I saw it, I need you to see if you have the exact same reaction I had, which was going, I had to pause and be like, what just, <laughs> what was that? That's an insane way to end the series. Um, one moment. Uh, if I knew what I was doing beforehand, there it is. It is, uh, there it is. Let me make sure that it doesn't accidentally get caught on the recording. I need to see your reaction. You probably have seen this video around. It, you can see by the title, it is a hell of a title for a video. It, if, for those uninformed, it is called Bazooka Headshot. This is how one of the villains meets their end in Gundam. It is uh, an amazing tour de force. This is what watching 40 episodes, this is how this character gets taken down. And I rewatched it maybe four Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he gets her clean, right? Just... <laughs> boom. Just uh, yeah, that was like right through the fucking forehead. Oh, I I rewound it so it was like in the middle of the night and my people were sleeping in my house or my apartment and I was going oh, to myself. <laughs> Amazing series. Uh, maybe I'll do something talking about it on the channel somewhere just so I can say, hey, this is my experience as someone who has only ever experienced Gundam through random media. I want to actually watch through all this series, so. Uh, and that's it for no that's not it for um shonen archive because there was actually one other thing i had to tell you so remember at the end of the kintama arc how they had something called um montama uh -huh. so they actually put do you know what montama translates to i have no idea it basically translates to vagina and do you know what they right. put on the TV guide for that episode of Gintama? They did not call it Gintama. No. They called it Montama. <laughs> so I was told that basically they got a whole buttload of like complaints from Japanese parents saying, what did you have on during this time slot? That's called so funny. It was when they, they the I was told that story in the comments. I said that is amazing. No wonder they were under constant fear of being canceled, <laughs> literally canceled, of uh, their series being canceled because they were pulling jokes like that and they were not informing the people behind it. <laughs> Great stuff. Now we're now we can officially end it. That's the end of Shonen Archive this week, everyone. Join us next time for more. In Tom of Goodness, and until next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody.